you mentioned, uh, well, you talk about open source. Obviously, Kubernetes is open source. A lot of the tools around it are. Um, and one of the themes I've heard as I've talked to people is uh, open source versus as a service. You know, um, it's open source, you can go buy the tools yourself and you can build your own house or, you know, as a service, you can rent it from a landlord who's done all those things for you. Um, how do you see the advantages? How would you advise somebody to consider those two approaches? I, I don't see them as or, orthogonal concepts. Like, I mean, I, I wouldn't trust a software as a service company that doesn't also show me the code and, uh, and uh, is transparent about not only the code, but also the process and, and how, they, how they manage the, 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 the customer data and, uh, and their own process. So uh, the two things are not exclusive. And I think the most successful um, companies out there uh, think of Airbnb or Uber. They are actually also the ones that open source most of their tooling because they, they realize that they brings value to to their own company. So it's a uh, it's a uh, it's it's not you, you can do both and be be successful as, as many many examples out there like Netflix and uh, and others yeah. and Microsoft as well. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and another uh, theme that comes up, I know I realize you, you work at Microsoft, so you may have a point of view on this, but the topic or the question of whether uh, you should go multi-cloud, you know, and not just multiple cloud, I don't necessarily mean that you do one service in one and another in another, but what, are, what would be the advantage or disadvantage of running a single app across multiple clouds so that you're not, let's say, you could say locked into one, or maybe you could uh, take advantage of the different uh, strengths of the different providers. Um, there's a lot of opinions on both directions. How do you see that? Uh, so again, like the, I, was talk, I was talking about the perfect storm, and I forgot to mention because Kubernetes adoption is also bringing this unification of APIs, and you are allowed now to you, you are enabled to to run the same application anywhere you want because it. It runs on Kubernetes. That, of course, like makes people think oh, I can run on multiple cloud. It's just it's easy, right? It is easy, but I think uh, I mean uh, I, I don't run a, a company myself. But uh, if I was a, running a company myself, I would I would just, I would think twice before really going multi cloud because it's not. There is not a lot of uh, value in there, right? I mean, it's your customers are not paying you because you run in multiple clouds. They pay you, they 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 they, they, they value you because you you stay up in fa in the face of uh, of disasters. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to run multi cloud for that. It's uh, it's uh, I think it's a misnomer, it's a misunderstanding. Uh, there's definitely value in uh, not putting all your eggs in one basket, especially tying yourself commercially to one provider. That makes sense, but uh, uh, multi-cloud is not for uh, for the faint of art. And uh, I I still have to crack the, the the problem. I mean, myself, I'm not. I can say that I can. Uh, I, I'm I'm effect efficiently running application in multiple clouds uh, today. So it's not easy. People do it, uh, and also they mix uh, on-premise, they mix edge, there's a whole... I've been hearing about hybrid for the last five, six, seven years, mm -hmm. since I was at Red Hat, of course, like, uh, there's always this idea, which is, I think, is an idealized concept of going hybrid. Mm -hmm. There is some value in there, but I think technology is still uh, immature. So we both need technology and processes and people with the right skills and the right uh, mental mm -hmm. approach to this. And I, I don't think we are there yet, but it's, it's, it will be interesting to, to see the evolution of this.